So how the heck did all these tools and stuff get all over the boat? What disaster has occurred? And it's not because of the bananas either. So this morning, aboard the Boogie Boo boat, Anchor Girl had a nice long shower. And when she came out of the shower, she asked me if I heard that water was still going over the side from the uh, sump pump. And I said, no, why would there be a problem? Well, guess what? There was a problem. And this was all full of water. And it took a little bit of fooling around and figuring out, but determined that it was a bad float switch. So the first job was to take all the tools out of that bilge area, which is my storage for all of my tools. Hey, su surprise, surprise. Which was not a very pleasant experience to uh, look at, but not, you know, nothing overwhelming, nothing that I couldn't overcome. So pull all the tools out, all the toolboxes, wipe the bottom of them and make sure they were dry and then dry that whole, ser that whole area up. So once I had it all dried up, it was dive into the actual pump and see what the heck was going on. Now I tried to operate the float switch manually and it wasn't happening. And this area of the boat also has behind it another pump, which is like an emergency bilge pump. I was wondering since that whole area was full of water that it should have come on. So I looked down in the engine room, there is a small DC panel with breakers with the pumps and all that in there all those circuits and nothing had popped so that was not the issue so coming back inside uh did some farting around and discovered that that actual that pump in the back that float switch even though it's completely encased you can manually operate it so i did that to determine that okay the circuit is not the issue so we have power to it and then through a process of elimination and uh, using my multimeter determined that the issue was the float switch. Now luckily I have on board this boat not one but two float switches and was able to uh, get one in there and get it working. So of course I can't do any work on the boat or even at home for that matter <laughs> without my little helper offering his assistance. Hey. So by using my multimeter I was able to determine that uh, this is the ground line, this is the power coming in, the power, and then this is the common for the this uh, for the float switch. So uh, by jumping the power over the ground, I was able to get the pump working. So that means the pump is okay and uh, working properly. So clearly it's the float switch. Now luckily I happen to have a, a spare one for just such an emergency. And it is a rule, uh, rheumatic. It looks the same, but it looks like it might be just a little bit too long. So I don't know if that's gonna, if that float will pass by this screen. Worst comes to worst, I just have to take that screen out because I don't know if this really even doing anything. Well, I guess it is. It looks like it's catching something in there. But Anchor Girl cleans this sump on a regular basis, so um, you know any debris that's in here should <laughs> really not accumulate over time. We've seen sumps like on our last boat when we bought it, and it was just ugh, as many of them are. Uh, so that's not really going to be an issue. Now the good news is on this side, well, it's it's a good news, sort of good news type of scenario. This is an emergency sump, which did not come on because what is going on in here in this little area where the shower sump is, it overflowed because it wasn't working. And so it overflowed into this compartment. Now that's the lowest point here, like everything pitches towards the back of the boat. And this is uh, lower by eh, probably an inch and a half, maybe two inches, if that. So any water that comes through is supposed to accumulate. That pump is supposed to come on and uh, pump the water out. But unfortunately, as with most float switches, this thing is set. It's too high up off the deck. And so it wasn't coming on. So I tested that. I just, uh, 
Here, let me see if I can get it going again for you real quick. This one, although this case is encased and closed, there's a little tab on the side. Okay. So you can twist it. But see, this is the problem. Uh, as with all of these things, the water flows back out. Now, in a, in a perfect world, this should never have to work. So I'm just going to dry that out and know that it's working in an emergency, it will work. So right now we're back to this situation. Is uh, going to swap out that float switch. So you can see having these side by side, the old one with the little hook on the top. That float is shorter by about well, maybe three eighths of an inch, something like that. Uh, so I'm just going to set it in there and see if it does clear. And like I say, if not, I'll just take that... Uh, that screen out that great which isn't that great okay the other issue I just discovered is uh, between these two pumps is the mounting base uh, as you can see there are preset holes for that this one is the screw that you actually take out and then that one there which is slotted but this one's a little bit too far ahead as you can see down in the sump well there is the spot for the forward screw and then the back one which I took out and this should just slide in like the other one just kind of slid in the other one just kind of slid into that slot um, whereas this one won't because it's it won't go back far enough so what I am going to attempt to do and I think I've had to do this in the past on another boat I'm just gonna delete that screw altogether and then just use the back one I mean, right now, all that's going to be doing is stopping it from going from side to side. So I'm going to take that out and just tighten that one down a little tighter and hopefully be okay because I do not want to locate a new screw farther ahead and then potentially going right through the case. And then, of course, the water's going to escape, which would be totally defeating the purpose of this whole project. Hello, little pussycat. So I dug deeper into my little bag of tricks and, and spare parts and discovered this guy right here. I knew that I had the rule because I know because I remember buying it. Um, but I found this one here. Don't know why I have this one. This is probably from, she's one of the older boats. This is from a company called Invincible Marine. But you can see that they line up size wise a lot better because this rule it's hitting the see that can't see it right now but it's just rubbing up against it and if this were to pitch back a little bit I don't want it to jam either in the up or the down position because especially if the boat's underway and this comes up because there's you know there's still uh, air conditioning condensation comes in here as well um, two air conditioners plus the shower so I don't want this to come on while we're underway and then tip back and then you know potentially jam that up there so I'm gonna take this one out just the one screw I haven't hooked up anything yet I'm gonna pull that screw out take this one out of the box and hopefully that will fit a little bit nicer and then I'll have another spare spare so now that I've had my lunch and a little bit of a break I'm going to finish this job up uh, happy that the pump is working correctly as it should so I'm just going to grab a zip tie and I clean up these wires refasten them nicely and then I have to dry this out because as I mentioned that sump pump that float switch doesn't come on at a, you know it, it doesn't work in the ideal capacity so I got to dry that out just with the rag in a bucket and dump it in the sink which drains right over the side of the boat does not have to use this uh, bilge area to get rid of that water and then put all the tools back so I've got the wires just temporarily tied together and let's see beautiful now as an aside a quick story when we had our 400 sedan bridge that boat had two heads in it so two uh, washrooms so there was two showers 
and two sinks and two air conditioners. So that's six items that were all going into the bilge, or not the bilge, but this, uh, this sump well, as well as the kitchen sink dumped into it. And like I say, Anchor Girl cleans these things regularly. But on that boat, we determined, well, what we discovered and we found over, you know, first year of having that boat, that the sump was always stinky and dirty. would step on the boat on a Friday after leaving the boat for, for the week. And there was always that smell, like just that, a bad smell. And it was always bad. So we determined the smell was always bad and it was always dirty in that sump. So we determined that it was as a result of the organic matter that was coming in from the kitchen sink because that was the sink that was used the most in that boat and it would just sit in there and and, and start to like smell bad and rot and whatever else so after the first year so the first full winter that we had the boat after buying it i determined that the galley sink was high enough off of the water line that i could plumb that drain straight out the side of the hull and that was the first big hole that I ever drilled into one of our boats. And it was so satisfying, nice inch and a half. And I was able to take that, that hose from under the sink, the galley sink, and boop, right out the side of the boat and bypass this all together. I capped off the line where it was coming back under the galley so that you didn't have any potential smell coming out of this sump well. And uh, never had an issue after that, so I was happy about that. So it's all back together. Now, final test, I'm just gonna run some water down the drain of the shower, which I just did, but clearly not enough. Just wanna make sure that that float is coming on nicely all by itself. So just uh, dumped a bucket full of water down the shower drain. Just make sure this is operating correctly. Here we go. And that's it. So she's all done, all dried up. Well, mostly it's a little bit of residual water around the sump pump, the sump well but it's all good. Just gotta put the tools back now. Okay, everything's all back together and operating correctly as it should be. So hopefully that's the last time I ever have to do this job and spend the better part of a Saturday. I got better things to do. All right, see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.